Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we're back with another sponsored video in our series from the Mocha Alliance, where we look at how these coax to ethernet adapters can often represent a better way to extend your network than just relying on Wi-Fi. And what we've been doing over the course of this series is identifying different activities where Mocha really shines. And we're going to be looking at streaming today, not streaming in, but streaming out. Game streaming, live streams, that sort of thing, and how uh, getting the best connection on your local network can actually make a big difference to the quality of your stream. And we'll be comparing uh, two of these adapters to my Wi-Fi setup here. And we'll also be making use of the uh, Video Go that we got in the other day from Teradek to see exactly what the differences are with uh, some pretty detailed statistics we should be able to get while we run our tests here. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from the Mocha Alliance. They suggested the topic and have also reviewed this video before it was uploaded for accuracy. Uh, but we've done a bunch of these videos before, and as you know, I am a big fan of this technology because it's a great way to get a very reliable and fast connection around your home without having to run Ethernet everywhere. Uh, so what this does is it works with your existing cable television wiring. Uh, you need two of these to make it work unless your cable provider is already giving you some kind of Mocha signal, and you'll need to ask them about that first. But basically what you do uh, is you take this one and plug it into your uh, router and then connect up your cable TV wiring here. And then you can go to any other cable jack in the house, plug the cable TV wiring into the other unit, attach it to your computer or a network switch, and now you've got a connection between the two points here. And you can add multiple adapters as well, so you can pretty much outfit every room with these things. They will not interrupt your cable or satellite TV broadcasts, and in fact, these boxes from Action Tech actually have a splitter built in. Uh, so you run your cable TV wire into here and then connect up your TV or set-top box to the other coax plug here. And they are just plug and play. There's no configuration. They just start working. And again, we're seeing gigabit speeds back and forth on these. I've got a lot of videos on this product line, so check them out down below in the video description. It really does work as advertised. So let's move on now uh, to getting this streaming test set up. And we're going to start with Wi-Fi. So let's see how we have this configured. Okay, so here's the scenario we've got playing out here. I have a video running on a loop here on my Mac, and what I'm doing is outputting the video uh, over this HDMI cable over to this Teradek Video Go streaming box that we reviewed the other day. And what that box is doing is transmitting this video as a stream uh, to Teradek's core services, and we get a lot of great detail as to the quality of the stream uh, from that service. So I'm going to zoom in on the screen a little bit just to show you what to look out for here when we start our testing. Uh, so you can see our data rate there is running at about uh, five and a half or so megabits per second. And we have a very healthy video buffer here, which means that we're transmitting at a good rate. We've got a little bit in the buffer there should something go wrong. And it's been running pretty consistently here on my Comcast connection. Now, one thing you have to be aware of with Wi-Fi is that uh, you're sharing your Wi-Fi connection with other people in the house. So right now, I am the only one sending data to the Wi-Fi access point that is located directly above uh, that Teradek box. So everything is working just fine because there's no competition for uh, the frequency that we're using. But if we go over to my MacBook here and start running an internal network test, we're not going to be sending data out over the internet here. We're just going to send data to another computer on my network. So I'm now going to start that test. I'm going to click the button here right now to get it going. Now let's take a look at uh, the statistics page from uh, our Teradek core service here. And you're going to see that buffer drop very quickly. Now remember, I am not transmitting any data uh, from this laptop over the internet. It's just going through the Wi-Fi access point to another computer in the house. But look at this, our buffer is dropping. Uh, we will soon drop frames to the service because uh, that Wi-Fi connection is not able to serve both of these uh, transmits at the same time. And now, as you can see here, we're dropping frames and the quality of our stream will go down. Uh, so if I go back here and just stop the test now and 
uh, knock off that transmitting and we run back over to the statistics page here, you can see the buffer now is filling back up and things now are a lot healthier than they were before. And this is one of the weaknesses with Wi-Fi is that it works great if you're the only one on the access point, but once other people start doing things on your network, the quality for streaming in particular will go down quite a bit. It may not impact you as much when you're browsing the web or doing something else that's lighter in uh, its overall demand on network resources, but something like streaming where every packet is important, uh, you will very quickly see things degrade. It can even get tricky on mesh networks as we saw in one of our prior videos because if your mesh node is connecting to another one, uh, somebody could be in a different part of the house and impacting the quality of your stream. So now let's repeat this test using Mocha as our network here and see what uh, improvements we can get with it. All right, so now we are Mocha-fied and I set up a little Mocha network here to get everything working. So what we've got here is one Mocha adapter that is connected to my router with this ethernet cable. Uh, so this cable is bringing in uh, our internet service. Uh, I then have a coax cable running out here. Uh, that is getting this device now connected to two other Mocha devices that we have running right now. So this device here, although it looks a lot different than this one, uh, works pretty much the same way. You plug your coax cable into this uh, plug here, and then you've got two Ethernet connections and a Wi-Fi uh, extender here as well. They call this the WCB6200Q. I reviewed this a little while back. Uh, it is connected via Ethernet to my MacBook here, so we've got two Mocha devices running here. And then we also have the VDU running with a third Mocha device. Uh, we've got a splitter here on the coax cable to have all three working at the same time. And right now the VDU is broadcasting uh, through Ethernet over to coax. Uh, it's then going to this box here and then getting pushed out over the Internet. And if we check our statistics here, you can see that we've got a very healthy stream like we did before. Uh, but right now, the VDU is the only device that's actually transmitting across the network. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do here is switch back to my computer, and we're going to run that speed test again that will really saturate the local network. Now remember, we're going to be pushing packets out over the Mocha network here, uh, through this device and then out to here. So we're going to be sharing a connection here essentially with uh, the whole uh, Mocha network. So we're going to click run and that is going to begin the test on the computer. Now keep an eye on uh, the statistics here. We are not seeing any of that buffer issue where we were running out of buffer. There are no drop frames. Uh, the test here is running and in fact uh, right now as this test is running I'm doing about 920 megabits per second uh, on the Mocha network, which was much faster than our Wi-Fi network, and we have no drop frames and no impact to our stream uh, because you have so much more bandwidth to play with here, uh, and Mocha is a little more friendly to competing traffic uh, on the network. So again, we've got three Mocha devices running here uh, with a little network that is all uh, going through this endpoint here and everything seems to be functioning uh, much better than it did via Wi-Fi. So here you can see just how much better Mocha is for live streaming versus Wi-Fi. And if you've been stuck streaming with Wi-Fi because that's your only option, but you have a cable jack in your room or near it, all you have to do is get one of these boxes, plug it in, attach another one near your router, and now you've got a hardwired gigabit symmetrical connection between two points in your home, which delivers much greater reliability, which live streaming really requires. Those packets have to get there intact, and you really get them there much better over a wire versus Wi-Fi. So hopefully this gives you another example as to how Mocha might be a way to make your life a little bit better in your home and also for your audience in this instance because you're not going to be dropping off as much uh, when somebody else in the house wants to download or send a file to somebody. So all in, a great way to get going. Definitely check out my playlist linked down below in the video description because we've done a number of other tests like this. And we've also looked at each of these Mocha products individually so you can see exactly how they work and what their performance is. Uh, I have found in my home, even if I uh, go and set up something on the other end of the house, it works the same. I've got a room on the far side of the 
house here that has probably four or five splitters in between what I've got down here in the basement and it always works just fine. It's really pretty cool. You also do not need an active cable TV subscription. So even if your wires are not being used for anything, this will still work. And if you do have an active cable or satellite subscription, it won't interfere with it either. So altogether, a really nice plug and play solution for network extension in your home. And until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Anuj Zaveri, and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.